Hello! This is Catherine at the Brown Bag Teacher, and I'm so excited to be coming uh, live today. I am in Kentucky, and so we're going to try this outside. It's only about 75 today, but humidity is like 85%, and so it feels like it's raining, even though it's not. And so, um, two things may interrupt this. One, if it actually starts raining, and then two, bees, because I'm deathly afraid. But if that, in that case, I would just take them inside. And so, I'm so glad you are here with me today. Today, we're gonna talk about a strategy that I use during guided math for mini lessons and small group lessons. So, so often, we get um, into like our guided, reading groups and like we do the number talk and we do the warm-ups and we're good to go and then we get to small groups and we say what am I supposed to be doing so I hope it's just a real life it happens and so intentional planning fixes that but I wanted to share with you a strategy that I re I enjoy and I really my students enjoy um, one of the best things about teaching to me is the creativity. I love the fact that I'm not doing the same thing every day. I love being creative, um, those types of things. And so I know people love teaching for all different reasons, but that's one of my favorite. If you have a favorite reason for teaching, if you would add it into the comments. I'm, cry I'm trying to see if comments are working today. If not, I may stop and retry because it's n not a lot of fun if comments aren't working. If you wouldn't mind, if someone would type hi in the comments or wah wah. Okay. Yay, Cedric. Okay, sweet. Okay, we've got this. So this is, that was a really awkward pause for the people who were watching on replay, but I'm so sorry. Last time I did Facebook Live and there were no comments and it was super awkward. And so, and because I knew you were asking questions and I couldn't answer them. Okay, so hi friends. So the creativity in teaching, I love it. I get to do different things. I get to use my mind in different ways. And right now I'm reading a book by um, Joe Bowler called Mathematical Mindsets. If you haven't read mathematical mindsets it's kind of like a textbook but it's a really interesting textbook and it's how we structure and look at writing uh look at math and how we build growth mindset but also just how we make math engaging and how we create mathematicians who love math for real reasons and so one of the things that joe bowler talks about is setting up positive norms in math class and um, there are seven norms for math and everyone can learn math at high levels mistakes are valuable questions are really important math is about creativity and making sense math is about making connections and communicating math is um, about learning not performing and depth is more important than speed and if we talk about, and I really like those, and he talks about how we need to, to communicate to students, this is what math is, okay? Math is not skill and drill, math is not finding the right, right answer, but math is all of these really rich tasks in the real world. And so um, the one that I really like, is, and he talks a lot about, is that math is creativity. And the great thing about the Common Core is that it does support creativity. Students are expected to have different answers to math problems. They're expected to be able to talk about their math. And that's really encouraging because we're encouraging students to share about their experiences with math and their experiences with numbers. And so this idea of, of using photographs in the math class is one that I enjoy because it makes me a creative mathematician and so I'm in a model lesson and then we're going to talk I'm going to show lots of different examples that you could use in the class and so this is one of my favorite ones and so I show a photograph and I said and I'm gonna pretend like you're my first grader so I'm gonna say friends I am so glad you are here today um yesterday I was at the park and I saw this dad and the son and they were playing and they were having so much fun. They were going on the slides and they were running and chasing after each other and it looked like it was a blast and I really wanted to join them. Now, um, then they got bored of the slide and they wanted to do something else. So rather than doing the slide, they saw a seesaw and oh my goodness, the little boy was so excited. So the little boy saw the seesaw and he immediately got on. He got on right away. And then the dad got on and something happened. Friends, what do you think happened 
when the dad got on the seesaw. And so you're going to have students partner talk now and they're going to be like, oh, well, I think the dad went up or I think when the dad went down, the little boy went up and you're going to share and then you're going to have them share. Okay. So we think the boy went up in there and the dad was so heavy that he went down. Okay. And so now we're going to start making the math connection. So friends, if I had my, the boy and he got on the seesaw, it went down initially, right? But then the dad got on the seesaw and something very funny happened. What happened? Oh my goodness, they went straight down. But friends, this makes me very nervous because this looks very unsafe. And so I want to flatten out the scale. How could I even out the seesaw and make it safer? And so um, I know we have these small mini scales from ETA Hand to Mind. They're really nice. And so you're going to have students explore what, where they could put the blue piece to make it an even seesaw. Okay. And so you want st students are going to make mistakes. They're going to try different things. They're going to see, Ooh, adding it to the um, five doesn't really help. And eventually th they may get the answer. They may not. And that's okay. And so you're going to bring them together and then you're going to say, okay, friends, What's something, What? where did you add the piece that didn't work, okay? Because mistakes are important. Okay, so you saw that when we added the piece to the five, we saw that four and five was not the same as 10, okay? So, and then you go through the ones that didn't work, but then let's talk about what did work. So when you were working with the seesaw, where did you place your blue piece that it did work? And eventually someone will say, well, we placed it on six. And you're gonna ask, okay, tell me in a full sentence. And they're gonna say, four and six is the same as 10. And with this lesson, I'm focusing on the equal, meaning of the equal sign. And so we've taught the equal sign as the same as, not always equal. So building um, that idea of algebra. So four and six is the same as 10. And then at that point, Students have explored it, they've done it real world. You might introduce some task cards. And so these are different task cards I provide in my talking about numbers um, resource. And it's actually a free resource if you join my mailing list. And so if you have that resource, um, you can download these. If not, you can go to my blog, The Brownback Teacher, and download them if you search for number talks um, or talking about numbers. And so that's an awesome idea. So that's just one example of, and so from there, you're gonna get students indiv practicing individually and in groups, and you're gonna drop the seesaw analogy because we do wanna introduce that mathematical vocabulary of like balancing and equations and the same as, but initially it's okay. And initially I'm not even gonna write numbers. I'm just gonna let students explore and students talk about the relationships. But you have an instant hook because students have been to the park, they love seesaws, and they think it's hilarious that the dad hit the ground and that the little boy went up. And so that's just one way I've used photographs in my classroom. Um, another way, like when we're doing measuring, showing a picture and saying the other day we were making shadows in science, right? We were talking about light and I saw this, I saw these three kids on the playground and they were making shadows. Okay. Um, and so, but the boys want to know who can make the tallest shadow, but I don't know how to judge. And I, I have to be the judge because I'm the teacher and they chose me to be the judge. So if you were helping the boys, how would you um, measure? And then maybe potentially having lots of different measuring tools, but maybe they decide on Unifix cubes and then talking about how do we measure and making sure there are no gaps and you're using the same unit. Does color matter in the Unifix cubes? All of those things really help students explore the idea. Um, another idea that we've used is the idea of building blocks. So the other day I was visiting my cousin's friends. So in these scenarios, you're going to have lots of friends, lots of cousins. You're going to go to the park a lot, situations like that. Um, and this little boy was building a tower and he had all kinds of shapes in his hand. Now as he's building, okay, he's building and he's having a great time, but now he only has a few shapes left and he's not sure which one should go next. And so this is a great one to talk about attributes of shapes. Okay, so attributes of shapes, what do you, sh uh, so sides, angles, what shapes can you build other shapes with? And so it's an interesting and fun hands-on intro to that. Other ideas, um, for photographs in the classroom, you might um, look at, um, sorting colors like graphing and data with different color books. Again, I can't see your uh, comments 
So Facebook's being wonky. I will have to get back to you. I'm so sorry. Um, sharing like equal pieces, fractions. Um, you could do uh, the cookie jar situation. And so um, this one's one of my favorite. And so it's for like finding missing sums. So I know I had 12 cookies in this cookie jar to begin at the end of the beginning of the day. And when I came home, I thought that there were eight and it made me worry because I thought maybe someone had taken my cookies. What do you think? And then having counters out. So the really important thing with photographs and using these as a hook is that you're giving students concrete experiences. You're making it real. So we're connecting it to the real world. This actually happened. It could actually happen. Math is everywhere. And then you're asking them to make a connection. You're asking them to problem solve or you're asking them to finish the story. So there were cookies missing. What do you think happened to those cookies? How many cookies are gone? And so you're building this visualizing too for word problems. And so it's a great intro to that without actually giving students the really terrifying words. Especially at the beginning of the year in first grade where bless their little hearts they can't read yet. And so it's a really great strategy for that. I get asked a lot, where do I get my pictures? And so as someone who is sharing pictures and looking at pictures like with you all, I legally purchase mine like an iStock or Dollar Photo Club or those types of things. But as just classroom teachers using individual photos for your classroom, um, you can take them from every, anywhere. You could steal, you could borrow, snag them from Facebook, you could Google pictures in your daily life when you see situations about math going ahead and um, taking pictures of those and thinking, ooh, I could do a really cool math lesson with that. And it's a great connection to show uh, students that math is real world and it's all around us all the time. Now printing the photos, that's a great question. Printing the photos, um, you could do black and white. You could just show them on an iPad or a laptop. You don't necessarily need to print them. You, If you are a member of the HP Instant Ink Club, you get ink cartridges at your door every single month and so when your printer it's automatically connected to their system so when it's out of ink it sends a signal and they will ship more ink to you without you even having to order it and it's for like a bulk price every month so you could do the $10 plan $15 plan and so that's an awesome option as well and so you don't need to go broke to figure out how to print the images and so um that's it for today. It's a simple mini lesson, but it's a really powerful one because it does get students cre thinking creatively. It gets them thinking about math in the real world, and it builds a context for learning, which is really important for our young learners, and it provides hands-on experiences. So thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and log off, and then I'm going to respond to some of your comments um, in a little bit since Facebook wasn't showing those to me. Thanks so much for joining, and I'll catch you all soon. Thanks so much.